Well, we've got uh, Phil Oakey with us, who's uh, from the Human League, and in a moment I'm going to be asking him just uh, what bit of that music was made by the computer. But also today, a book about music computers. It's called The Musician and... We've actually got a sort of Harley Davidson motorcycle. mentioned the Human League, so Phil, perhaps you can tell us. We heard there um, a section from Mirror Man. Which of the instruments there were reproduced using, not this machine, but one that you have that's very like it, isn't it? Um, well, everything apart from uh, the guitar and bass, and, and that's uh, sort of a step forward to us. We never used to use guitars or bass at all, but everything right down to the drums is uh, a digital recording which we put into the computer and then gets played back in time. Are you saying then that nowadays you can set up a band, uh, a group of people who have no musical experience whatsoever, can't play a single instrument, but they can actually produce the sort of hit records that you've managed to do? Um, no, I can't say that. We had a, a band like that for about two years mm. in which none of us had any musical experience. Um, we didn't really get anywhere until we got two guys in who, who did. One's a guitarist and one's a bass player. I think you do need to be able to communicate in yes. a way that, that you learn. Yes, but I mean, so we're not actually then seeing the end of the live musician, are we, Ray? Oh, I think definitely not. There will never be a replacement for the gifted performer who makes an instrument sing. But the technician, and I'm afraid in pop, there are an awful lot of people who've got by just by being able to play oh. quickly. I'm afraid the day is over, and that's why many musicians are worried. Um, a computer can reproduce anything mechanically. And in the hands of a skilled user, such as Phil and the band, they can release the music that's inside people without the necessity of ten years of piano practice. Are there any individual musicians or individual instruments that are particularly under threat from this machine? Well, I think the drums have become the first... Take it you wouldn't dream of taking a machine like this on stage with you when you're doing a live performance, Phil. So how do you manage then? We do. Do you? Yes. Good heavens. <laughs> Yeah, well, How do the fans well, react to seeing drummer. something like this instead of a computer drummer instead of a real drummer? Yeah, well, well it's, it's, it's better than almost any drummer you can find, uh, unless you get a, a super session man, Simon Phillips or something. You're not even really putting that many people out of work because you do always go for, for the really good people. And again, if you want your uh, drum computer programmed really well, you get in a drummer who knows how to do it. Yes, aren't you though then locked into a time with it? Because, uh, I mean, if you've got a really smashing session going, a drummer can actually take the beat up, take it down, extemporize a bit. You can't do that with a computer, can you? That's true. You, you can to a certain extent, but it's a bit crude. Yes, it's mm. true. You give that away. So that's one of the drawbacks yeah. of it. Well, Ray, you, you fed my voice. I, I loved that your title. What was it you said? A concerto evangelist saying good morning, Britain. I don't think we're going to aim for quite that. But you're both going to join us again right at the end of the program when I hope we're going to hear some music that's being produced by the emulator. We'll see you both later Thank on. You. I hope we'll see you immediately. Well, as you can see, we've all come over to enjoy a nice uh, cup of tea out of this incredible teapot that we saw earlier in the program. And to heavy, enjoy a nice bit of music because uh, while we've been away, uh, Ray Hammond has been playing with this extraordinary emulator and uh, Phil Oakley of the Human League Estate with us to tell us a little bit about uh, what he's going to do with it. Uh, what have you actually built into that now that we can hear? We've loaded some new sounds and uh, I said earlier that drummers were the people who were suffering a great deal from the arrival of the computer and I think Phil made a fair point that it's drummers in the end who get the best out of these things. Um, so although it is reducing the number of drummers required, it's not really uh, doing away with the requirement for drummers. To give an example, although this looks like a keyboard now, We really do have a drum set. Um, it's possible if one wanted to. To play a tune on drums, mm. which is completely beyond the range of uh, a normal drum set. And it really allows um, conventional instrument sounds to be used in very, very new ways. And Phil, this is really what you're doing, isn't it, with the Human League? You're trying to create new sounds all the time. Um, well, possibly. I, I, I don't think it's important, though. Really? No. Yeah, but you're actually building a studio at the moment, aren't you? And you're putting this sort of thing into it. So what sort of sound are we going to hear on the new Human League records? Um, more singing. I, I, in pop music, I'm, I don't think it's really very important what the sounds are like in the background, really. Mm. Um, I really think this sort of thing comes into its own in maybe classical music, film soundtracks. I, th I think the Blade Runner soundtrack was done completely on an emulator. You know, it sounds like violins and things. In pop music, you, you mash it all to pieces anyway. Everything's as loud as everything else. <laughs>
Now, you see, if we'd said that you mash it all together in pop music, all those pop music fans and Human League fans out there would have said we were desecrating the sound you make. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> they would. <laughs> but, but that's what you do on a pop record. You make everything exactly as loud. A, a triangle would sound just as loud as a bass drum. Hmm. How do you feel about that, John Julius, using this for classical music? Well, I don't know quite how you start. It's so difficult playing classical music anyway, isn't it? I mean, mm. it seems to me you'll make it infinitely more difficult still by doing it on this. You've still got to get your scales and your runs and your things. Somebody's still got to play the thing. Mm. No, seems not no, that's not true. That well, really I, use, uh, I use a computer well, you, you keyboard. You program the whole thing from the very beginning. Yes, yes with what, numbers. What interpretation do you program? Do you, do you program a noise track interpretation? Yeah. Well, no, Somebody in fact, uh, if you start off with a computer, I mean, for example, the musical type keyboard that's here is merely there for convenience. On many computers that Phil uses, it's just buttons, mm. like an ordinary computer. But when you're programming a piece of music, you program all of the feeling that you can hear. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, a musician, and I, I'm not being rude to Phil, need not necessarily be skilled on a given instrument, but may have a great deal of music inside them. And when they're programming the computer, much, much, not all, but much of the feeling that a very, very skilled musician can get out of an instrument can be programmed. So that when the computer plays it back, it has a great deal of feeling. It's very human. I feel feeling as much computer. as if you were playing violin. <laughs> um, I think any computer program is merely an extension of programming skills. Well, I think we're going to have to wait and listen to this feeling computer. We're going to have to actually leave you now. We'll be back with Good Morning Britain again tomorrow morning at half past six. I hope you'll join us. Let's leave you with a thought for today. It was phoned in by a viewer, in fact, on budget day, but I think it fits any day. And she said, just when you think you've got the ends to meet, somebody moves the ends. See you tomorrow. Good morning, Britain. <laughs>